Problem 1 is asking us to graph f of x equals 4 to the x. The first thing you're going to need to do is draw your x and y axis. And then you're going to fill out your table. We're going to plug in for x just numbers negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Plug those into the equation. So, for example, you'll put 4 to the negative 2 in your calculator or do it in your head. And that will go here. And then 4 to the negative 1 goes here so on and so forth, and then you plot these points. In the end, your graph should look something like this going up. It's a growth equation because 4 right here is greater than 1. For problem number 2, you're asked um, the amount of money A occurred at the end of T years when a certain amount P is invested at a compound annual rate. R is given by that equation. If a person invests $160 in an account that pays 7% interest compounded annually, find the balance after five years. So first of all, in this equation, you're going to put your starting amount here. You're going to then put your um, rate right here. Make sure that you move your decimal point twice. So it would be 0 0.07. You're going to put, for N, it says compound annually, and annually happens once a year, so N is just going to be 1. And then for T, we're plugging in 5 because it's after 5 years. Put that whole thing in your calculator, and your answer that you should get is 224.41. Number 3 wants us to describe the equation y equals 2.9 to the x as exponential growth or decay. And in this case, any time that this base number is bigger than 1, it's going to be a growth. Any time it's between 0 and 1, it will be a decay. So your answer here is growth. All right, number four wants us to graph this equation. Um, first of all, note that it's going to be a decay because one-third is less than one. Draw your x and y axis. In here, you're going to put numbers in for x. Um, we can... We can just start with this base function of 1 third to the x and plug in negative 2 through 2 for x. And then after we do that, that plus 5 is actually a movement left. So we're going to subtract 5 off of each of these. And then our point's going to be this number, comma, whatever you got for y here whenever you plugged negative 2 into this equation. Once you graph it, it should look something like this since it's a decay function. Problem number five is asking if we deposit $1,600 into an account at a bank that earns 14% annual interest, compounded continuously, what is the amount of the account rounded to the nearest dollar after 10 years? So first of all, we're going to use our PERT equation because it says compound continuously. P is your starting amount, so however much you start with investing, put it there. E is just a number. There's a button for it on your calculator. R is your rate. Make sure that you move your decimal point to the left twice. And T is time, so it's going to be after 10 years. Plug all of that into your calculator, and your final answer should be 6,488. Number six is um, also a growth and decay equation. A car purchased in 2010 has decreased in value 7% per year. If the original price was 26000 how much is the car worth in 2015? So you're going to use your decay equation here. So A is how much it started off, how much it started costing to begin with. Um, R, make sure that you move your decimal to the left twice. Make sure there's a minus sign since it's decay. And T is going to be how many years have passed from 2010 to 2015. So don't plug in 2015 right there. Your final answer for this problem should be $18,087.90. For problem seven, we're, we are writing um, each equation in exponential form. So we're going to do change of base, or I'm sorry, not change of base. We're going to do the log ride where we write 16 to the 3 fourths equals 8. So I'll do this first one for you. 16 
to the 3 fourths equals 8. For C, it might be helpful to switch to make it look like that. Problem 8 says evaluate log base 6 of 216. You could either do change of base formula, so put log of 216 divided by log of 6 in your calculator, or you could change forms and figure out 6 to the what power equals 216. You should get 3 for this answer. All right, on number 9, we're expanding the expression. So let me remind you of some expansion rules. Okay, so we have these three properties. First of all, if you have log of something being multiplied on the inside, like m times n, you break it up using addition. So you put the m in its log and n in its log, and then you add them together. Likewise, with division, you break it up using subtraction. And anytime you have an exponent, that exponent can come out front as a coefficient, um, and then just the x is left inside the log. So for 9a, you should start by breaking up all of the multiplication. So I see multiplication here and here. So you should write it using three logs. And then bring the 4 and the 2 out front of the logs that they're in to get rid of the exponents. And there's the answer that you should get. For problem B, you should start by breaking up this division. So you have ln of 2x minus ln of y to the fourth. Then break up the multiplication going on in the 2x and deal with this 4 as an exponent. The answer that you should get for this is going to be ln of 2 plus ln of x minus 4 ln y. In problems 10a and 10b, we're using the same three rules that I showed on the last problem, except we're going to use them backwards. So the first thing we're going to do on 10a is um, make, our ex make these coefficients, the 3 and the 4, exponents. So bring them up to be exponents on the x and the y. Then we're going to take this addition sign, and we're going to multiply what's inside of the logs. All of your problems, or all of your work on Part A should have a base 5. It doesn't change anything. It just comes along. With B, same idea. We're going to move this up as an exponent. Move this up as an exponent. And then we're going to use this subtraction sign to um, divide the two insides. And we get those two final answers. OK, now we're into solving exponential and log equations. So the first thing we want to do on 11 is get rid of this 2. And then what we're going to need to do is change forms. So we're going to use log base e, so that would be ln, of 4 equals your exponent. So it equals the negative 0.07t. And then to get t alone, just divide by negative 0.7. In the end, you should have t equals negative 19.8. For problem 12, you're going to start by doing your log ride. So make sure that you have 5 to the second equals 3x plus 9. And in the end, you should get x equals 16 over 3. For problem 13, we have two logs set equal. So we're just going to take the insides and set them equal. So you're going to have 4x plus 1 equals 25. Once you solve that, you should get x equals 6. And for 14, we first need to condense these two logs. Since they're being added, we're going to have log base 6 of 2x squared times 3, which would be 6x squared. And then we just change forms and solve. This one's going to have two answers since you're left with a quadratic. You get x equals a positive and a negative square root 6. On all of these, make sure that you're checking for extraneous solutions. An extraneous solution occurs whenever you have a negative inside of the log. In problem 15, it says to use a calculator to evaluate e to the 2.2. So once you plug that in your calculator, you get approximately 9.03. 
Problem 16. For the triangles shown below, find the cosine of z. So to use cosine, we're going to need to remember SOHCAHTOA. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So cosine of z is going to be your adjacent over your hypotenuse. 13 is your hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. 5 is your adjacent because it's between the right angle and the theta, or your z in this case. And 12 is your opposite because it's opposite of your angle. Your answer that you should get here is 5 over 13. Problem 17. In a right triangle, sine of a equals 3 over 4. a is the measure of the acute angle. What is tangent of a? The first thing you're going to need to do is draw a triangle and label your parts. It doesn't matter where we put angle A. I'm going to put it right here. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So label your opposite side as 3 and your hypotenuse as 4. After that, to do tangent, we're going to need to know our adjacent. So you're going to have to do Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Once you solve that for your adjacent side, you can write down that tangent of A is your opposite over adjacent, whatever that happens to be. In this problem, your final answer is going to be 3 square root 7 over 7. Problem 18. The radio station West is erecting a new transmitting tower that is 280 feet tall. A support wire will be attached to the ground at point A and to the tower 250 feet up at point B, as shown below. The wire must be at least as long as side AB. Find the length of AB. So since this is a right triangle, I see this right angle down here, I can use SOHCAHTOA. I know my opposite side. I want to know my hypotenuse, so I'm going to use sine. So sine of 70 equals opposite over hypotenuse, and you're going to solve for hypotenuse. For this problem, your answer is going to be 266 feet. Problem 19. We're going to solve for theta. Um, since it's a right triangle again, we can use SOHCAHTOA. We know all three sides, so you can really use sine, cosine, or tangent, whichever one you prefer. In this case, theta is going to be equal to 37 degrees. Don't forget, once you solve, or the way to solve for theta, so say I had tangent of theta equals something, then to get rid of tangent, you would do tangent inverse on each side. So it'd be that tangent of negative 1 of your fraction to get your final answer. Same with sine and cosine. Problem 20, if cosine of theta equals 3 over 5, then what is secant? Draw a triangle to help you solve this. Um, we could draw a triangle to help us solve this, but if you remember that secant is just cosine flipped, then you would know to just flip the fraction 3 over 5. So you're going to get the answer of 5 over 3 for this problem. Problem 21. In a right triangle ABC, sine of A equals 3 over 8. What's the measure of angle A? So in order to solve for an angle, all we're going to do is take sine inverse on both sides, and that will give us our answer. In this problem, you should get A equals 22 degrees. Problems 22 and 23, we're converting from, from angle, I'm sorry, we're converting the angle to a radian, or the radian to degrees. So for the first part, we're going to take 135, and you're going to multiply it by pi over 180. And for the second one, we're going to take our radian, and multiply it by 180 over pi. The way I remember this is for radians, I want these pi's to cancel out. So see how I have one in the top and the bottom? And for degrees, I want these degrees to cancel out. So I have a degree on the top and a degree on the bottom, which would leave me with radians. Make sure your radians answer is in a fraction and has pi in it. Problem 24. What angle is coterminal with 122? List one positive and one negative. So coterminal angles are just 360 degrees away. You can add 360 as many times as you want, and it's going to be coterminal. You can also subtract 360 as many times as you want, and it will be coterminal. So two angles that you could use as answers here are 482 and negative 238. 
Problem 25, same thing. Give one positive, one negative. A positive one would be 30 degrees. A negative would be negative 690 degrees. Problem 26. In the right triangle below, the measurement of angle C is 90, the side AB is 14, and angle A is 24. Find CB to the nearest tenth. So we're looking for this side. It's a right triangle, so I can use SOHCAHTOA. I know my hypotenuse. I want to know my opposite. So you're going to use your sine function. 27, same idea. We're finding x. We know the adjacent. And we want to know the hypotenuse. So you're going to use cosine. Your answer for 26 is 5.7, and your answer for 27 is 41.1. For problem 28, we have a law of sines situation, because this is not a right triangle. I also know it's law of sines because I easily know both big C and little c. Big C in this case is 101. So I'm going to use sine of c over c, and I want to solve for little b, so we're also going to use sine of b over b, so we won't need this part right here. So set this up. The only unknown that you'll have left in here is little b, and then you're going to solve for little b by cross-multiplying. All right, for problem 29, we're going to use law of cosines. So I have little a squared, or a that I'm solving for. So plug in your b, b, your c, your b, your c, and then your a. Put it all in your calculator. And then whatever you get, square root it. You should have a equals 1,946 feet in the end. I just realized that I forgot to give you your answer for problem 28. So problem 28 your answer was 4.8 miles or 5 miles. Problem 30 is a lot like problem 28 was. I found that my third angle was 105 degrees, so I'm going to use law of sines to solve for little a. And then I also know both of my c's. So we're going to use sine of a over a equals sine of b over b. Plug in I'm sorry, not B. We're using C's, like I just said. So you're going to plug in both your C's. Your angle C goes on top. Your side C goes on bottom. Your angle A goes right there, and you're going to solve for side A. You should get A equals 43.2.